Have you ever needed to use a second display with a MacBook on the go? Or do you want a smaller display for desktop use? Well, there are two great options to choose from. You can either use a portable display powered via USB-C, or you can use Sidecar with an iPad. So which one of these is a better second display? Hey, I'm Jared. And after working on my last video, showing you how I was using this Dell portable display with my Mac Studio and Studio Display, somebody posted a comment referencing an iPad with Sidecar, but wired. So I did my research of a simple Google search and found that indeed you can use Sidecar wired. And I totally do not know how I missed that over all of these months, and it blew my mind. I've had a number of reliability issues with Sidecar wirelessly, and that's why I started looking at this portable display to begin with to use with my Mac Studio. But a second small display is perfect for working on a laptop on the go where you need a little extra screen real estate, or even if you're just a laptop user at home. If you're using a desk setup at home with a large display, you can get multiple large displays, but for me, I like the setup with one large display and a smaller display below, like using a MacBook with a big display. This is perfect for secondary stuff like research, notes, simple web browsing, remote desktop, whatever, while keeping my main display for my primary tasks. So now if I can use an iPad with sidecar wired, how much different is that than using a portable display? Well. As it turns out, there are a number of differences, so let's take a look at the strengths and weaknesses of these two devices as a second display for your Mac. Looking at pricing first, the 14-inch Dell C1422H comes in just under $330 on Amazon today and comes with the display, a USB-C cable, and a wool sleeve. iPads start at $329 for the 9th gen model with a home button and can go all the way to $1099 for the base 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Now iPads do go on sale frequently, so if you're interested in that, check the links below. When it comes to the design, you know what an iPad is. iPads are generally a slab of glass clad in aluminum back and sides. There's buttons on the sides for sleep and wake and volume, along with cutouts for speakers and USB-C or lightning. Mostly the physical difference in iPads resides in screen sizes, camera bumps, and display features. The Dell is a 14 inch matte finish display on the front with minimal modern bezels on three sides and the Dell logo at the bottom. The display sits on a base that allows you to adjust the angle to find exactly what feels comfortable. The base also houses two USB-C ports along with a power button, a rocker switch for adjusting brightness, and a button for comfort view. The case is all plastic with a space gray color on the back. The design benefit of the Dell display is that it has that integrated built-in stand, which is nice for adjusting so you can actually see it comfortably. With any iPad, you're going to either need a case of some kind like the Apple Smart Folio, which is quite expensive and has limited angle options, or a cheaper case or stand. Right now I'm using this Moco aluminum stand, which is actually pretty good and light and has five different angle options. But that is another added cost and another thing to toss in a bag if going portable. Having the built-in stand is a pretty valuable addition in my opinion. Let's look a little bit more at the displays themselves now. The Dell portable display has a 14 inch 1080p display. This translates to 157 pixels per inch, which is quite a bit lower than the minimum 264 pixels per inch for iPads. However, Apple basically doubles the pixels. So the working resolution of a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, for example, is 1366 by 1024, where this MacBook Air is running at 1440 by 900. What this means is text, icons, everything is just a little bit bigger on the iPads with sidecar than it is on the native resolution of the Dell display. And the 12.9 inch iPad nearly matches the size of the Mac display. This makes text and everything slightly easier for me to read and interact with on iPads compared to the 1080p display. The iPad and sidecar just looks sharper and right sized to me, but it may not be that much of a difference for many people. And here's the difference between the Dell display and the regular 10.2 inch iPad for comparison. When it comes to colors, I used a Spider X Elite to calibrate both displays to get a reading of the colors each display outputs. I expected that the iPad would get very good results here because they have P3 panels. But what I found was that due to whatever compression Apple is doing for sidecar, the colors are actually worse on all of the iPads compared to the Dell. The Dell gets 98% of the sRGB range where the iPads will only get about 95%. With P3, the Dell gets 75% and the iPad gets just 73%. To my eyes though, the iPad looks better, even though the colorimeter says otherwise. 
My guess is that this has more to do with the glossy panel on the iPad compared to the matte display on the Dell. But this just tells me that you should not rely on either of these two displays or options when doing anything that requires color accuracy like photo or video editing. And speaking of video, the response rate on the Dell is very poor. Both of these displays have 60 Hertz panels, but when it comes to how fast the actual pixels can change colors, the Dell is pretty bad. Just look at this example of the Dell display scrolling up and down, and you will see the trail it leaves as the letters move. Then look at this shot of the 10.2 inch iPad that does not exhibit an issue anywhere near that level, and the pixels change much quicker. This pixel response issue also translates just to watching video on the Dell display, which exhibits tearing and other distortions, but the iPad actually plays video pretty well. The Dell display gets up to 300 nits, but iPads can get 400, 500, or more depending on the iPad. And if you need to reduce blue light, you can enable either night shift on the iPad or comfort view on the Dell. Either of these devices, the iPad or a portable display, can help you get stuff done, but they're better suited more for office work, like notes or web reference material or whatever. They're not the best for multimedia or photo or video editing or anything that requires color accuracy or precision. And each of these devices has benefits over the other, like how the iPad can do iPad stuff. Just disconnect it and you have a fully functioning device. You can also use the Apple Pencil if you really want to when using Sidecar or enable the touch bar at the bottom. I don't use either of these features, but it's an option. The iPad can also be used wirelessly with Sidecar if you don't want to connect or don't have a spare cable. I found that wireless Sidecar is not as stable as wired and can sometimes disconnect or not even reconnect automatically when you wake the Mac. But since I've been using this wired, Sidecar has been extremely stable for me. The Dell portable display can do pass-through charging at up to 65 watts because it has those two USB-C ports, which may be important depending on your setup. It has a good base that allows for good angle adjustment and comes with a protective sleeve. So which one of these two devices is a better second display for a Mac and which one should you get? Well, if you have an iPad of any kind, give it a shot. But because both of these devices frequently run below $330, I think the iPad actually provides a better value. You get a brighter display that looks better and performs better, even if slightly less color accurate in sidecar. And you can use it both wired or wirelessly in a pinch. You will, however, need a case or a stand to prop the iPad up to use it, which adds to the cost, but considering that the iPad is an iPad and can do iPad things when not being a second display, I think that trade-off is pretty well worth it. Yes, the base iPad is a smaller device, but you can also look at the iPad Air and the iPad Pro if you need something a little bit larger to get a little bit closer to that 14 inch display. But because these are secondary or portable displays, maybe the screen size doesn't matter that much. There are other portable monitors other than this Dell display that offer different port options, different sizes, different refresh rates, and some are even touchscreen, but that stuff may not necessarily work with the Mac and they're more expensive. So. The only reason that I can really see wanting to go with a portable display, this Dell or otherwise, over an iPad with sidecar would be if you're using this at a desk setup all the time and you never want to deal with disconnecting it, or if you're going mobile and you absolutely need that pass-through charging from the Dell display to a laptop. Otherwise, I would just choose an iPad. The iPad has better performance as a secondary display for your Mac, but it's also an iPad and does iPad stuff. But what do you guys think? Have you been using Sidecar and were you completely oblivious, like me, that you could use it with USB? Or have you been looking at portable displays to go with your Mac? Let me know below. Also, YouTube knows you better than me, or maybe better than you know yourself, and is confident that you're gonna love this video right over here. So definitely check that out. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.